In this video, we're going to cover connecting power supplies in parallel. There are multiple reasons why we do this, but let's just cover a couple of real important reasons why we would connect power supplies in parallel. The first is when there's a power supply that we need that's not available in the power level that we need it. So in those cases, we may want to combine power supplies where we can provide a load to the output and be able to cover the load and system requirements by combining them in parallel. Another reason is when we're connecting a power solution together where we need redundancy. This is when we will supply more power that's available from the power supplies than the system actually needs. And we'll demonstrate those two points as we go through this video today. So when connecting power supplies in parallel, it's important to try to find power supplies that actually are designed to be connected in parallel. And you can look for a couple of features here. One would be look on the data sheet and see if they're parallelable and they will usually have that in the feature set. The other thing to look for is current sharing options. Now, if the power supply has a current share option or a connector, the, this auxiliary connector can be used so that the power supplies can be sharing current by means of a current sharing pin. The current sharing feature allows each of the power supplies to share equally. And that's really important in the system because by allowing the power supplies to share equally, one power supply will not be overloaded over another. So from an overall system reliability, having power supplies that are equally sharing will give you the best reliability and power output for your system. One important note is that when you are paralleling power supplies and you're connecting signal wires from one to the other, make sure that the wires are completely separated from the power lines. I will bring this up from time to time in other videos when we're talking about best practices, but it is a very good practice to ensure that signal wires are separated from power wires because you can get some crosstalk and noise that's being injected into those wires. So it's important to make sure that they're separated. So today, let's demonstrate uh, two easy ways where we can actually get power supplies to be connected in parallel and also provide some additional benefits to the system. The first is an actual rack system. This power supply rack system is actually designed to be scalable. That means that for systems that require uh, specific power requirements, let's say you may ship a similar system with more features and options that may require more power, by using a scalable option such as a rack power solution, these modular a rack power power supplies would simply slip into the actual slot to provide additional power when needed. So this is a great way to add power either as a uh, complete system when you're shipping it or let's say that you want to do an upgrade for a client down the road and more power is required, all we would need to do then is upgrade the power at the field. So this is a great way where you can actually parallel power supplies, provide the additional power that you need and be able to supply the client. In addition to that, these power supplies and rack mounted systems are actually designed to be paralleled and they also have redundant features inside them. That means that I could load the entire rack with enough power, not only to power the system, but I can also load it with additional power. Now, in case a power supply were to fail in this application, all we would need to do is be able to pull the power supply out without having to shut down the system. And when you're looking for this feature, be sure to look for what we would call hot swap capabilities. The hot swap capability will allow you to be able to service the entire system by pulling a power supply out without any shutting down the entire system. These are critical for data centers where you just can't shut them down or financial centers where they need to be up 24 seven and you have to provide maintenance on the power supply. Other options for power supplies when you cannot provide a rack system is to take individual power supplies and wire them in parallel in the system. And in this case, we have models here. These models are also uh, have that capability of having that current share feature where they're communicating with each other 
but they're individually tied together with these parallel cables to that single load. So each of these power supplies are now sharing equal power to the load. And it's important to note that when you're doing something like this, always read the data sheet to ensure that you have the proper amount of power available for the load. And in other words, make sure that you do not overload the power supplies more than 90% of the total load. Regardless of whether this is on the data sheet or not, this would be something that we would recommend as good practice. All right, so in an event you cannot find the right power supply with a current sharing or parallel feature, you can take two like power supplies that are equal in power and voltage and combine them in a parallel configuration. But there are several steps you have to take. The first step is to ensure that you have output diodes that are going to separate each of the power supplies electrically from each other so one power supply cannot feed another one. Output O-ring diodes can be selected. Usually you want to select a Schottky type diode which gives you the lowest forward voltage and also you want to select a diode that's on the same package as the diode for the other power supply. What this is going to ensure is being on the same die and on the same package, the characteristics and the physical characteristics of those diodes will be uh, similar enough that the voltage drops between the two diodes will not differ. The second thing you want to ensure is that the wire lengths from the power supply to the actual load are the same size through those diodes. And it's important to note that because if the wire lengths are different, specifically when you have a lot of current, you may actually have a difference in voltage. Now, why is that so important? It's important to note that when you put two power supplies in a brute force or droop method configuration, which is what we just described, the power supply with the higher voltage will actually take the full load. And the power supply with lesser voltage will actually go down into almost like a standby state and not supply any power. Now, this is not a very desirable situation because you'll have a power supply doing all the work and another power supply just barely there until the load is enough for both power supplies to actually be working. So it's important to make sure that the wire and the diodes are completely the same so that you can minimize the voltage drop. And then lastly, very important, is that you take the voltmeter and before you connect them in parallel, actually take the voltage reading of both diodes and ensure that the voltage is the same. So what we want to do is ensure that we are connecting the power supplies before we connect them to actually measure the load and ensure that the load are the same. So in this case, you would take the power supply and adjust this to, in this case, is a 12 volt supply. Get it as close to 12 volts as possible and then do the same for the other one before you connect them together. Once they're the same and they're measured the same, you do the connection. You make sure that all the connections are nice and tight. You turn the power supply on, make sure it's loaded, and then make sure that the connections from the power supply to the load have the similar voltage drop. All right, so now we shared with you some different options of connecting power supplies. And remember, connecting power supplies in, in parallel can actually be an efficient way to deliver power to your system. And if you're ever unsure about any of anything that was discussed in this video, hey, give us a call. The five minutes that we can spend with you will save you tons of time in designing your system.